when I came and started my program my first year at UC Davis, I rotated through a couple labs, but the first lab I went to was Aldrin Gomes, and I knew right away that that was probably going to be a really good fit. But when I came into the, this program, I wanted a molecular cellular background in physiology, and I wanted to be able to do that kind of research, research with hypotheses based at the cellular level, because I feel like that's really like how you get a foundation of understanding. So we're a muscle physiology and proteomics laboratory, so we do a lot of questions that are related around protein degradation um, and how maybe those pathways could be affecting cellular performance. And then my work is a little bit of a spin-off on that. We got interested in diabetic cardiomyopathy because a couple studies show that there could be a role for protein degradation in, in the pathogenesis of that disease. Um, so that's a heart disease, it's an intrinsic disease in the, in the muscle of the heart um, in, in diabetic patients and it occurs in both type 1 and type 2. The question that I focus on is whether or not the ubiquitin proteasome system is playing a substantial role in the pathophysiology of diabetic cardiomyopathy. Most of the proteomics assays that we run right now, I'm using whole heart homogenates and I have to equalize the amount of protein across all my samples and to do that we always double check our protein concentrations by running SDS page gels and staining them or imaging them and then we also have to look at protein amount. So I have like a hundred milligram heart, I'll end up with maybe 1.5 mils of 2.5 microgram per microliter concentration homogenate and with that amount of lysis I have to run protein degradation assays to look at protease activity levels. And then I also have to run a number of westerns to look at proteins that we're interested in to see if they're changing between the groups. So what I'm seeing so far in my research for the diabetic cardiomyopathy is that for my particular mouse model, it's a type 1 model, I can look at them right before they develop diabetes and then right after they develop it. And actually already I can see that the UPS is affected dynamically during that time period. And so far we've only looked at the protein levels and the, with the peptide degradation assays, um, the activity of the proteases in the proteasome. Um, so I have a lot more work to do on that. Imaging comes into play in our workflow at multiple steps. So I, I have to rely on imaging to tell me if my protein, if the samples have the same amount of protein across the board. I have to look at my imaging to tell me is when I'm using antibodies, is there a change between this protein or this protein? Or, um, so I have to rely on imaging for that. And if you don't have accurate imaging to, to look at your antibody um, levels, then you're not getting a clear picture of what's happening. So the Chemidoc MP is a lot of fun to use because it's really straightforward. Um, it cuts imaging time at least in half, but I like having the option of opening the door versus opening the slider. It makes it really easy to place whether it's a gel or a membrane and you can open the door if you just need to make a small adjustment. The biggest advantage of the Chemidoc that I really like is having the ability to use the stain-free. And it's two minute and 30 second activation of the stain-free gels and just allows me to be confident before I even do my transfer that my gel ran well. You know, with the Chemidoc MP, it just cuts out a lot of steps and everything faster and more efficient. My goal is to not be a graduate student forever. <laughs> So on that aspect, you know, anything that makes my, my day faster and I'm able to fit more in, it fits into my plan. <laughs>